around 3.30 a.m. last night, a tear gas canister was thrown into a Zagreb nightclub called Super Super during a LGBT-themed evening and when it was full of people. In the panic that ensued, there was material damage and two people suffered minor injuries. The organisers of the event have posted on Facebook that it's a shame that there are those in society who wish to deny them the right to celebrate love, but that this incident won't deter them. An investigating judge has decided that SDP MP and former Chief of Staff to the Prime Minister Tomislav Saucha will remain behind bars until all the witnesses in the case are questioned. Saucha is being held in investigative custody in Zagreb's Rematinac prison. He is accused of causing over half a million kuna of financial damage to the state budget by authorising fraudulent daily allowances to three special advisers, which they never received. It has been reported that at least seven witnesses will be called on to testify in the trial. Former SDP Finance Minister Slavko Linic has commented on the case of Tomislav Saucha. Linic was expelled from the SDP after falling out with its leader Zoran Milanovic and he says the former Prime Minister should bear full responsibility for this corruption scandal. He points out that it was Milanovic who appointed Saucha and that due to the actions of a few self-interested individuals the party's rating was now falling. After Serbian Foreign Minister Ivica Dacic called the late Croatian Cardinal Aloysius Stepinac a war criminal following the unveiling of a monument in memory of the former Zagreb Archbishop, Croatian Foreign Minister Davor Ivo Stir has said that Dacic's attack was conducted in a manner reminiscent of the worst kind of communist apparatchik. He said that a strong protest had been conveyed to Serbia's ambassador yesterday and that Croatia had rejected Dacic's request for a bilateral meeting. Dubrovnik Neretva County Prefect Nikola Dobroslavic and the President of Italy's Veneto region Luca Zaya have signed an agreement on strengthening cooperation in the economic, tourism, agricultural, scientific and technological sectors, as well as in terms of protecting both regions' cultural heritage. The Veneto region has been tasked with managing an EU bilateral program for cross-border cooperation between Italy and Croatia. The program is financed with 200 million euros of EU structural funds and Dobroslavic said his county would be applying for its support. Sport and Croatia's handball champions PPD Zagreb lost last night to the Macedonian side Vardar for a score of 25-20. This defeat means that the Zagreb side is in last place in Group B of the Champions League. This afternoon's forecast calls for sunny weather in the eastern regions along most of the Adriatic coast and in the Dalmatian and Istrian interiors. Although sunny periods are expected in some western inland regions, elsewhere a low-lying cloud could linger for most of the day. Winds inland will generally be weak, while along the coast there will be directionless breezes, with a moderate northeasterly Bura wind in the Velibit Channel. Highest daily temperatures will be between 1 and 6 degrees Celsius inland, between 10 and 16 degrees on the coast. On Monday, it'll be sunniest in the east of the country, while in the west, it'll be cloudy during the morning, with light precipitation in the mountains. During the afternoon, skies should gradually start to clear. The rest of the week should be mainly dry and stable. It'll be sunny on Tuesday, but on Wednesday, there'll be more lingering fog and low-lying cloud. On the coast, there'll be variable cloud cover on Monday, with the chance of some light rain in parts of Dalmatia. From Tuesday, it'll be sunny in most regions and temperatures will rise. There'll be a moderate to strong northeasterly Bura wind, which during Monday night and Tuesday will be very strong in the Velibit Channel. Mm-hmm.